Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I am your currently helping my dad recover from knee replacement surgery in Nashville, Tennessee, goblin host Daniel Green. And don't worry, you'll only see one video from this setup because tomorrow's video is actually a pre-recorded one. And then soon after that, I will be home and recording from my regular studio. But don't worry, I've put Fantasy things in the background here, so we're still immersed in a wild, whimsical landscape of my dad's office. But let's just go ahead and start with a piece of quickie news here today, and that's that pre-orders are live for the next Malazan book, The Fiends of Nightmaria. So if you've been looking forward to that one, go ahead and jump into the description down below, click that link, and you can pre-order this book. Or if you'd like to look into any story we cover here today, just go ahead and give it a little peek, and you'll be able to check out these stories for yourself today. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the next news. The Folio Society is continuing to roll on out their Song of Ice and Fire books. Now they are up to Storm of Swords, and hot damn, does it look as good as the rest of the series so far. I can't justify spending the money to get like a full, complete collection of the Folio Society of Song of Ice and Fire books. I'm very happy with my Juniper ones, but these are some sexy books right now. Wow, but mm, not necessarily for me with that price tag, but I understand the appeal, and as someone who does own a couple Folio Society books, they are magnificent. But in the first announcing a book news here today, we actually have the first book in the new John Gwynn saga officially being presented to the people. That's right, for John Gwynn's new saga, Bloodsworn, the first book is officially titled The Shadow of the Gods. The Witcher meets Vikings in this brand new Norse-inspired fantasy series with acclaimed British author John Gwynn, which will thrill his existing fans, as well as being the perfect starting point for new readers. The old gods gods are dead, but their powers remain. Nice. And also an awesome new from Author News, we have Victoria Schwab getting her first Netflix adaptation, at least that I'm aware of, don't quote me on that, and that is going to be for First Kill, her lesbian vampire story. Excited for this, and Victoria Schwab definitely deserves a adaptation on this level. I'm currently about halfway through The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and loving it. So yes, Netflix, do this, and please do it well. Netflix, you've You've been turbulent recently. It's like high highs and low lows. Let's make a Schwab adaptation one of the high highs, shall we? And in two pieces of quickie news, I want to squeeze in here to give your ears a little bit of a break from that horrendous buzzing noise I tried to get rid of in editing, but for some reason my camera just started doing through the microphone. I'm so sorry, I don't know why. We had another trailer for Cyberpunk 2077 drop, and this had Keanu Reeves kind of telling you, hey, what are you coming here for? It was sexy, it was smooth, it was nice. I just realized there's gonna be more background noise because there's people doing yard work around me, great, fantastic. And in the second piece of quickie news, we also had, gosh, that lawnmower's coming closer. Isn't this just the best timing? I'm on a very limited time schedule, so I'm sorry with how rough this fantasy news is gonna be. We also had a Christmas Carol 2 with Kurt Russell and Mary Hole Gold, blah, drop. I almost did that in one take. Yeah, so they're getting that for Christmas, it seems as well, over at Netflix. Now in a story that is currently developing right now, so I can't speak as super authoritatively on just by how much these records are going to be smashed, but the new movie release of Demon Slayer is cranking through records over in Asia right now. It's absolutely extraordinary with just the enduring 2020 and everything going on, the fact that there's actually record-breaking releases happen right now. And if you're a Brandon Sanderson fan and looking forward to Rhythm of War, the prologue and chapter one have both been released on his YouTube channel, narrated, of course, by Michael Kramer and Kate Redding. Yes, I'm interested, hell yeah. I actually have the book right now and I'm cranking through it because, you know, I get booked early, sorry guys. and. I'm not allowed to say anything about it, so next news. So this Times article has been causing waves within the fantasy community. There's been an essay dropped on the r slash fantasy subreddit about it. Nearly every fantasy booktuber I know has covered it in one way or another. It's just causing reactions. I even did my own live reaction and since that reaction have come to respect the list in a way while harshly disagreeing with it. Like, I really appreciate what they did here, but they shouldn't have presented it like they did. Anyway, if you've just happened to miss the fact that Times, one of the most respected publications in existence, did a 100 greatest fantasy books of all time list, go ahead and check it out. They put them in chronological order, but it wasn't perfect. And what people have to remember is even if people are saying this is a best of all time list, it's still going to come down to subjective opinions, especially from the authors that they're actually pulling from on this panel to craft this list. 
list. So, you know, everyone's going to come in with their own, hey, this is my personal preference, and you're not allowed to tell them they're wrong, but you're allowed to harshly disagree. <laughs> my biggest criticism remains that there should have been more originally non-English uh, fantasy on there. And if your whole panel is made up of people who have never read non-English fantasy, maybe change that. Now we're going to go ahead and move on out of that hardcore fantasy news and into something a bit more loose to the genre, and that's going to be dystopian sci-fi. Is that the right categorization? I don't know. I haven't slept well at all in like the last week. And that's that we officially have casting for the Mad Max prequel in the work over with Frank Miller. We have essentially none of the original cast returning, and instead we have the likes of Chris Hemsworth, Anya Taylor-Joy, and Yaha Abdul-Martin II. I hope I said that right. Because this is a prequel, it's going to be taking place, you know, before the one we got in 2014. Wow, it's been a minute since that movie came out. And yeah, this is going to be interesting. I loved that Mad Max movie, and I'm not sure how I feel about them going back to a prequel. I want to see where Charlize Theron's character steps forward to. Furiosa was fascinating, and this apparently is still going to be about Furiosa. I'm not mad at this cast, and I also just want to see more movies in this universe total. Like... I don't know. Weird. What do you think about this? Let me know in the comments down below. Are you excited about another Mad Max movie, period, because of how good the last one was? But yet, you're kind of like me, where you're like, oh, I wanted to see where that cast went, but this cast still seems dope. I'm kind of all tossed up in the air, not sure here. And to be clear, this is not a Mad Max movie. This is a Furiosa movie, but that character was definitely engaging enough from Charlize Theron alone that I'm not upset about that at all. Tom Hardy had like five lines of dialogue. He did great. Like he was super engaging for how little he spoke, but I wasn't exactly invested in the Mad Max character from there. I'm more invested in Furiosa at this point for this reboot, re what a refresh, whatever it was. I can't keep track of these Hollywood labels. Now moving on out of there, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the trailer news of of course, as you've probably seen already, The Mandalorian Season 2 got its trailer, <clears throat> as well as a Warhammer Animations show reel that had like various styles coming together. It reminded me of Love, Death, Robots, even though it seems nothing like Love, Death, Robots. It's just like the multiple animation styles and the kind of cutting of this trailer. But yeah, if you're a Warhammer fan, go ahead and check this out. And the last piece of quickie trailer news, we also had His Dark Materials Season 2 dropping, which is a show I'm more okay with as I get further away from the Season 1 because I'm less annoyed by, I, I hate to say it, I don't, I, I like the guy as a person, but his acting just grated on me. Lynn well Miranda's performance, so I just, he seems like a good man. I love Hamilton, but he's just so harshly miscast in that role, and it really hurt it. But I do actually really like season one, and I'm anticipating season two eagerly. We're also getting a lot of rumors right now around Adult Swim's upcoming Blade Runner show called Blade Runner Black Lotus, and a potential casting for a lead role of Jessica Henwick. The show will apparently follow a female replicant, and will feature familiar characters from the universe, though I'm not entirely sure what they mean by that. Now we have two pieces of news today I wanted to close with. One, fantastic and awesome and the other not my favorite. The first of which is that we are getting a Static Shock movie produced by Michael B. Jordan. Hell yes! Oh my god, do you remember that show when you were growing up as a kid? I absolutely loved Static Shock. I remember running around my house with my friends pretending to be like characters in that show. So much nostalgia tied in here for me. Now Hudlin's team actually announced there was some form of Static Shock adaptation in the work all the way back at DC Fandom, but now we know it's going to be a feature film with Michael B. Jordan producing. I'm all for that. And DC really seems to be able to ramp up this character's presence as there also seems to be another comic book run with him in the work and a graphic novel. So I think they're trying to make Static Shock a new like higher riser within DC. And that's something we've seen Marvel and DC do before in their history. They just kind of take a character and through adaptation and ramping up will make them one of their headliners even though before they haven't necessarily been on like the Batman level. A lot of people don't even remember this but Iron Man used to not be the face of Marvel and the biggest hero they had. That's something that happened through adaptations and more comic book presence etc etc. Now Iron Man is essentially the face of Marvel. There's gonna be people who push back and say Captain America but you know what I mean. The point I'm getting at. And in the final piece of fantasy news we're covering here today, Star Trek Discovery has been renewed for a season for officially, so good on them. I'm happy for you. I would just love to know the actual viewership numbers of Star Trek Discovery because we're seeing new Star Trek shows announced constantly and I originally thought like they were only doing this because they're trying to make a Star Trek universe with a large audience but they've committed so hard and they're doubling down so much over at CBS. It's got to be 
successful in some extent, right? They wouldn't keep putting money in the pile. So I guess at this point, I have to retract some of the doubt that I had and say, okay, this seems to be something enough people are into to justify the continued renewal and addition of shows. Because I don't think, at least in my very limited knowledge, they would continue to double down at this point if they didn't have something there that was worth the value they're putting in. So, hey, I am happy for Star Trek fans who are enjoying this. It's not necessarily for me, but good on you. And that's the fantasy news of the day. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Wish my dad well in his knee replacement recovery. Hit the Patreon if you'd like to support what I do here. Be sure to check out any of the stories I cover in the links down below if you'd like to see them for yourself or fact check me. I don't always get everything 100% right. And have a good one, y'all. Peace. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons, K.H. Nielsen, D. John Kayser, Jack Silver, and Astro.